In this video, we discuss how to calculate the change in entropy in a system uh, when heating or cooling that system. All right, so uh, in prior videos, we have established the definition of the change in entropy in a system, and we've done so for a gas expansion. All right, what we have come up with is just that the change in entropy in that system is simply equal to uh, the reversible heat divided over temperature. And again, we have used this to calculate what the change in entropy is in uh, a gas expansion of a system. All right, great. Uh, the question is, well, um, how does this change in entropy then apply to a different situation where we might have, yes, a change in temperature in a gas? Right, so this would be an example in which you have, say, a glass of water, and you want to elevate or decrease the temperature of that water. All right, in that case, uh, what you actually have is a change in temperature. So when you look at this expression, that will be troubling because in this expression you only have uh, a single temperature, just one, not the initial or final or, or uh, any of the temperatures that that glass of water is experiencing as it changes in temperature. So the question is, well, what tem temperature would you, you would, would you plug in here? Uh, well, the answer to the question is that uh, this particular version of the change in entropy in the system applies only to uh, when you have an isothermal process. When you have a change in temperature, what you have to do is take a step back from this expression and then uh, notice uh, or look at the differential or the infinitesimal uh, version of this expression. Okay, so the idea would be that if the change is very small, you would change that delta s to a, a differential of s, and then you would have that this is equal to the differential of uh, the reversible heat over the temperature. And then what you do is uh, simply integrate this uh, uh, to get a macroscopic change. All right, so let's see how uh, that integration allows us to uh, place the temperature dependence, uh, how the temperature changes into that process. All right, so again, uh, notice that our, our example will be simply a glass of water in which you uh, apply uh, some heat to uh, elevate the temperature, and then the temperature is going to change from uh, T1 to T2, or if you want, the initial temperature to a final temperature. All right, now we know that the, uh, the heat, when heating or cooling a system, is simply the heat capacity uh, multiplied by the change in temperature. But of course, if we're t uh, doing here uh, infinitesimal change in heat, then this expression simply turns into this, okay? Uh, where that would be, yes, the infinitesimal uh, uh, heat, uh, and that, would, that is just an infinitesimal change in temperature. Okay, so you come to this expression and then say that uh, that simply is equal to the heat capacity uh, differential of T over T. Okay, something here is that uh, we're assuming that this process is reversible. And while heating and cooling, what a uh, reversible label means is that when we're applying, when we're supplying that uh, uh, energy as heat, this is a very carefully controlled process, right? So there's no hot spots anywhere. The temperature uh, rises uniformly. You don't have that suddenly this gets hotter and that is not, uh, not as, as hot. Again, this is uh, reversibility mean, uh, here would mean that there's a thermal equilibrium throughout. And again, that means that this is a very uh, uh, well-controlled, uh, careful process. Okay, so now with this definition then, we can actually go on and integrate to see how the change in entropy would be in this heating uh, or cooling process. All right, so we integrate both sides of the expression uh, from uh, the initial point to the final point, so that is simply going to be delta S, and the initial point and final point of the temperature will be uh, Ti and Tf. All right, so one of the approximations that we're going to make uh, this semester is that the heat capacity uh, of a substance does not depend on temperature. That is not generally true, and we will learn in physical chemistry uh, problems in which that heat capacity changes with temperature. But for now, for the purposes of this uh, video, we're actually going to assume that the heat capacity is constant. If that is the case, then you can uh, uh, factor it out, and then what you have is simply the integral of differential of t over t from the initial point to the final point. But this is going to be equal to simply uh, the heat capacity times the natural logarithm of the ratio of temperatures. Okay. All right, so that is uh, your final expression for the change in entropy when heating or cooling a system. Okay, it says the heat capacity, natural log of the ratio of temperatures. Can uh, 
something that will be uh, interesting here is that we rarely don't use this uh, uh, extensive heat capacity. When we're working with uh, molecular systems, we always like to use the molar version of this expression or perhaps the specific uh, version of the heat capacity. Generally here, we are going to be using the molar uh, version, which would mean uh, simply the number of moles of the substance multiplied by the heat capacity per mole. We also know that the heat capacity is depend on whether you're working at constant pressure or constant volume. So additionally, this molar heat capacity will be at constant pressure or constant volume depending on uh, the characteristics of the process. Okay? In general, we like to work at constant pressure, so this uh, will tend to be uh, C P sub M, meaning that this is the heat capacity, the molar heat capacity at constant pressure uh, for that particular substance. All right, to illustrate how uh, this works, the idea uh, here is then to do a numerical problem in which we're simply going to take one mole of water, which is about 18, uh, 18 milliliters, and then we're going to change the temperature from 25 Celsius to 100 Celsius. And we know that the molar heat capacity of water when we're doing this at constant pressure is 75.29 joules per mole Kelvin. Right, so let's then calculate the change in entropy experienced by that water when we change the temperature that way. Alright, so obviously this is simply a, a heating uh, process for that water and uh, we expect the entropy to increase. Okay, so that change in entropy should uh, uh, be positive. Alright, so let's start uh, plugging here the numbers. Notice that the delta S is going to be equal to uh, your one mole multiplied by the heat capacity at constant Molar heat capacity at constant pressure, 75.29 joules per mole Kelvin, and then the natural log of the ratio of temperatures. Now, something that is absolutely essential here is to recognize that those temperatures must be in Kelvin. You cannot use uh, uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit in these particular problems. Those temperatures must be in Kelvin, otherwise you will get this problem incorrectly. Okay, so uh, we change the final temperature from Celsius to Kelvin, that is going to be 373 Kelvin, and then the initial temperature is 25 Celsius, or 298 Kelvin, and the number that you get out of this is 16.9 joules per Kelvin. Okay, so mole, uh, cancels with mole, and then uh, the only unit left over is joule per Kelvin. As we expected, the entropy increases uh, uh, when you increase the temperature of the system. Likewise, if this would have been a cooling process, then the entropy would have decreased, but the delta S would have been negative. Okay, so in this video, we have seen how to calculate the change in entropy when heating or cooling a system.